If you think about who you would be if your digital self was deleted, like who are you as a person? Hello and welcome to Dinner Views. I'm Matthew Francis and this is the show where I get to cook a dream dinner for my friends here in Hollywood and then interview them about their life, their career, and their points of view on the world. Today, we have a friend of mine who's going to be our guest. We started together at BuzzFeed as interns, and then we became fellows. This guest went off to go and do her own channel, and she's been skyrocketing since. She is all about health and wellness, good, healthy food, yoga, and all about mindfulness, spirituality, and trying new things. She's incredible, and I can't wait for you to meet her. Please welcome Sky Cohen. Hello! Woo! Woo! Thank I'm you for being Yes, she's here. I Thank you for. Up. Thank you for being here. Oof. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, so because we were really kind of close when we were both at BuzzFeed, and then you did like a stint with Goodful and came over to my neck of the woods in the food world, which was mm -hmm. fun. So fun. But ever since you left, I've been like watching what you're doing, and I've been wanting to hang out with you more, and I just, we're both busy. Mm -hmm. But now you're here, and I can't wait to like kind of pick your brain because now I'm off on my own trying to figure things out, and yeah. she's killing it, you guys. So thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. You, I always connected with you so yeah. well. I feel like from the moment that we met, yeah. And I live all the way on the west side, so it's hard in LA yeah. to be getting together if you're living so far apart. Exactly. So we're gonna dive in today and make up for lost time. Perfect. Yes. Um, so now the first thing is I kind of gave a little bit of what people may like, need to know about you, but of course you have way more knowledge to share about yourself. So can you kind of give me like, a little bit of like a abridged life story of Sky for everyone? Wow. Yeah. I don't know if we'll go all the way back to the day I was born, but it was on May 16, 1994, 12.06 a.m., Beverly, Massachusetts. That's that. Um, but now I have a YouTube channel called Sky Life where I explore the world of wellness and I try all sorts of health and lifestyle trends and challenges, break down the science and research behind them and just document my honest experience trying them out. Yeah. So I'm really interested in all these different wellness trends yeah. that we see, especially in LA. There's so many. So many, but also ancient healing practices yeah, that yeah. now actually have science behind them. Yeah. Meditation was not scientific, but scientifically based yeah, for yeah. such a long time, and now we have so much research on that. So I'm really interested in the intersection of science and spirituality and kind of exploring what that looks like as we move into the next 50 to 100 years of uncovering all of what that means. Yeah. So we're gonna learn so much more. Wow. And like, when you, when you watch her videos, what's cool is like, um, she has all this knowledge and she like, has like all like kind of voiceover explaining a lot of things when you see all these graphics on the screen and like it cuts to like, I have ways to explain things to you and then she kind of goes on a journey in the video which is really fun because sometimes people are too nervous to try something or they can't like they're not in LA and so you kind of like go on a wellness journey with Sky, and it's awesome oh thanks yeah it is always a journey yeah. <laughs> when I'm trying some of these things and I just want to share I, I want to help people make better informed decisions yeah. about their health yeah. and try and put some science and research behind some of these topics if it exists because sometimes we're still learning. Yeah. Science is ever evolving. Exactly. That's the biggest thing I've learned is just because something doesn't have a bunch of clinical trials to support it doesn't mean it's not legitimate. It's just that we're still, we're always learning more. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, now that we got a little bit more about you, I want to kind of get more into your food preferences. Okay. So this is a game called Fast Food Favorites. And don't think of fast food. Think of like the game is just fast. Okay. So it's still healthy. Okay. But basically, you're going to have one minute to pull out like a category of foods so, like bread, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're going to say your favorite type of bread. So it could be wow. like um, whole grain bread, it could be white bread, whatever. And there's different categories. And um, your goal is to get as many as you can in one minute and beat out the other guests who have already been already competed it's doing rapid this. Rapid okay? fire. Yes, oh rapid my gosh. fire. Okay? I'm not used to this. I'm used to like moving at a slow mindful pace now i'm a pretty fast paced person so let's go oh okay you ready here i'm gonna put the one minute on the clock three two one go herb Ooh, rosemary Ooh, nice choice chocolate bar um the one at air one that's um honey mama's so good junk food french fries absolutely mm -hmm smoothie green smoothie that i make oh my gosh it's, i've been making it since i was like 10 years old mm -hmm. salad toppings um i love walnuts and sprouts okay common salad um so i love caesar salad like classic caesar salad is great fruit oh, watermelon 
Seafood. Um, I like shrimp. Scallops, though. Scallops. Mm. Fish. Salmon. Candy. Peach rings. Or gummy bears. I can't choose ice cream. Oh, my gosh. Green tea ice cream. Ooh, Matcha flavored. That's nice. To die for. Meat. You can, yeah. <laughs> Maybe fish. Yeah. I don't really dabble in the meat realm too often. Dessert. Ah, uh, oh, that's a dark question. Um, brownie sundae. Perfect, and that's it. Oh. That was good. That wasn't that, that, I feel like I was going slow. I want to come up right. with an accurate answer. Yes. But at a fast pace, that's why this, that's a fun game. Right, wow. and, and what's cool is like some people get high or low, but no matter what, we get to learn more about you from those answers, yeah. right? Like all these cool things. So let's count them up, okay? We got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, thirteen. That's pretty good. I don't know. How would I do? That's good. I, I would say you're pro like probably like in the middle, middle of this range. of this season. Who got the most and ever? How many? Uh, this season so far, the winner is um, Kelsey Dara with nineteen oh, so far. That's um, but uh, and the lowest was Jess Maroney season one with one. She did she didn't get one? the game. She did it wrong. <laughs> Um, but um, one thing I was really curious about is your green smoothie. What do you put in your like oh, famous green smoothie? Oh my gosh. So this is a recipe my mom taught me when I was very little. And it's avocado, mm -hmm. spinach, cucumber, lime, mint, coconut water. Oh, so, they, so almost like, it's not super sweet, not super fruity. It's a little bit more just like, yeah. okay. Very alkalizing, very refreshing. And if you need to be a little more sweet, you can do some stevia or monk fruit. Okay, wow, yeah. okay. Wow, an extra yeah. recipe for this video. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> um, okay, so now the next segment of the show is called What App? Where while we answer some questions from social media apps that people sent in for you, we also get to enjoy our appetizer, okay? There's an appetizer? Yes. And wow, how many courses is it? Are we doing appetizer, main course? What's the deal here? It's going to be, for you, it's going to be an appetizer and then our main entree. And then we will have enough of the appetizer to kind of eat with the main entree. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you sit tight. We're going to get the food ready for you and then we'll answer some questions. This is just the best. Yay. You're just the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll take any compliment you give me. When you asked me to do this, you're like, oh, I'm going to make your dream meal. I was like, um, yes. How could anyone say no? <laughs> this is incredible. That's the goal, you guys. Yeah. And I bribe people with food. Okay. <gasps> Oh, it looks so pretty. Oh my gosh. <gasps> okay, so this right. This reminds me of my childhood. Does it? Yeah. Which is weird to say because it's like a salad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But my mom would make me a goat cheese and berry salad with candied nuts. Similar, very similar to this. It was like my favorite salad growing up. Yes, yeah. So, cause, so basically I asked Guy, like, what, what kind of foods are important to you? What do you love? And she mentioned the salad. So you'll see it in the recipe video. But essentially it's a spinach salad with strawberries, pomegranates, goat cheese, and candied walnuts. And it uh, also has a poppy seed vinaigrette. So, so just yeah. a little bit. It's like going to be nice and sweet and fruity, a little bit of crunch. And hopefully it'll be everything that you want. So let me kind of just serve you some. Yay. Oh my god, these walnuts look so good. Thank you. There's I'm a huge fan of candied walnuts, candied pecans. Oh my god, so good. So basically what I did was I wanted to keep as much of it as like plant-based as possible. So yeah. the nuts I use aquafaba to toss the nuts with, and then there's coconut sugar, uh -huh. there's um, some oh and lots of cinnamon, a little bit of paprika, and you you kind of coat that and put it in the oven and toast them, and then they get all like kind of crunchy and hard, and then you oh. break them apart. Ugh. Oh my gosh, so good. So let's take a bite. Yay! Thank you. <gasps> wow, I'm so happy right now. I haven't even tried it yet. Mm. Oh my god. The walnuts. They're really good. They're so good. Wow. Mm. When I would make this when I was younger, we would just use the ones from Trader Joe's, you know? Easy. The candied one, but these are like 10 times better than that. They're so good. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Sky. Wow. Anything with cinnamon. Yeah, right? And I'm such a fan of cinnamon. I put it in on everything. And it's also so good for you. Yeah. Okay, so we'll keep eating. And there's some here, but we can also wait. I have plenty more of the ingredients. So we can have like salad till we puke, you know? <laughs> um, but, um, so here let me ask a few questions from people that sent them in. Um, so a lot of people loved all of, like your yoga stuff and of course for, like, your uh, this actual instructor of yoga. 
Yeah. Isn't there a certain degree or something, or a certain like certificate you have, right? I have my 200 hours yoga certification. 200 hours. Yeah. Right. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. A, you know, to become a registered yoga teacher, that's what you need. What you need, yes. Perfect. So um, a lot of people were asking, and I kind of put it in one, but what is your favorite yoga pose? Humble warrior. Humble warrior. Kind of like, okay, I don't know if you actually can demonstrate it, but like, what do you do? Okay, so it's warrior one pose. Okay. Which so you're, imagine, you know, everyone knows warrior two. Yeah. Warrior one, your hips are square. Okay. And your arms are up. But with humble warrior, you interlace your hands behind your back, and then you fold to the inside of your front leg. Whoa. So it's in a 90, 90 degree angle, your front leg, back foot is very firmly planted, okay. squaring the hips, and then you basically humbly fold forward and it just feels so good opening the shoulders but you have the leg strength too it's extremely grounding and powerful but also like very much a letting go pose wow like it's like relaxing all the muscles oh my gosh He's i'll put a, i'll put a picture of it here so you yeah. can kind of visualize it yes. but um i'm sure you actually have like some kind of photo or video of you doing it somewhere i i must okay. yeah amazing um oh cool and actually what's funny is um so we're right or it's like my where i live is like right next door to like the ymca in hollywood and um on saturdays there's um a woman named beverly and she's like really short and she's really british and she's really cute and she hosts the like yoga classes there and when i i do it like probably like once every two weeks i'd say mm -hmm. and it's like every day i'm like i don't need to do this and then i go i'm like wow it's changed my <laughs> life yoga is so great just get back on the yoga yeah, mat she's awesome when in doubt um, okay, so obviously you've made so many videos, whether it be like before BuzzFeed, during BuzzFeed, and now after with Sky Life. But of all of them, if you had to like kind of choose some favorite videos you've made, what would they be? Oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. I know, it's like the little babies you have to choose from, right? Yeah, well at BuzzFeed, I loved when I made a video about minimalism. And yeah. that was just a game changer for me personally in my life. Because for the first time, I just kind of lived with very little very few material items for a week mm -hmm. and experience the minimalist lifestyle and that kind of changed my perspective on how I was living. So that was a eye-opener. I really liked making that. Um, and then since then, I mean, I think my one of my favorite projects was going to train with Wim Hof in Poland. That's a goal Whoa, that I yeah, had yeah. for, I had had that for two years on my vision, Wim Hof was on my vision board. Whoa. And I didn't really know how it would unfold. I just knew I wanted to do that someday and it just happened to unfold where I got to be a part of making a documentary about the experience. So that was definitely one of my favorites. And on my channel, um, oh my gosh, well the sleep, I made a video series about sleep mm -hmm. and that kind of changed everything because I realized how much my life improved when I actually focused on my sleep. Wow. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the I'm simplest not thing, the simplest thing that can make the biggest difference in your life. Is so. it, was it just um, the amount of sleep or was it certain like times you went to bed and woke up or what did you what yeah. did you change so i did two videos and the first video was literally can i get seven to nine hours of sleep which is the recommended amount right. from the national sleep foundation and i just wanted to see if i could just do that and i interviewed a sleep scientist from stanford university about the importance of sleep and he like guided me on how i could get better sleep and then the second follow-up video is where i tried different sleep hacks okay. to improve mm. my sleep but i think that going when you wake up and when you go to bed it's dependent on your own circadian rhythms and that's also, um, that can be tied to your genetics, it can be tied to your lifestyle, your environment, so there's so many different like factors that go into that, but I really like waking up early. Uh, I was just yeah, like, going to bed like too late, and then trying, not just, not getting enough hours, but Got it. now I'm a lot better. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so obviously you cook, you cook for yourself a lot, and you eat healthy food, so what's your go-to healthy recipe for yourself? Go to healthy recipe. I just love throwing a bunch of vegetables in a bowl and making a giant salad. That's a go to. Okay. Because it's so easy. Yeah. It's so fast and easy. If you just meal prep veggies and keep them in the fridge, yeah. then you just throw together a bunch of different things and add in healthy fats, avocado and walnuts. Yeah. And as long as I'm getting protein, fiber, healthy fats, and greens at most meals, yeah. then it's good. Yeah, like yeah. one of my go-to things with extra vegetables is the same thing, just like mm -hmm. chopping up really thin, if they're like kind of like more tubery or like, like a carrot, like shave it or something. Yeah. And then yeah, I love um, either like a really good like lemon olive oil dressing or avocado dressing. Mm -hmm. And let's say if I want something more like, you know, warm and not uh, just like a, a, a crisp salad, I'll like, same thing, I'll just take all my extra vegetables and throw them on a pan and roast them. Cause yeah. that's still really healthy for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so. Uh, what is the first thing you do when you do wake up in the morning? First thing, hmm, okay. <laughs> so, 
I love waking up early because I like starting my day early and mm -hmm. I always need to start my day with a workout. Mm. And what was happening was I would be waking up early to get to a workout that I signed up for, like a hot yoga class or boxing or a circuit training of mm -hmm. some sort. Because I feel like if I don't start my day with something f physical, then I just don't feel like myself for the rest of the day. So I would like drag myself out of bed, usually wanting to stay in bed mm -hmm. longer, but I'm like, I have to get to the workout. So I would get there, do the workout, and then come home and do like my mindfulness practice. Mm. But recently I've been doing a video challenge where I try kundalini yoga for 40 days. Okay. Kundalini yoga is blowing my mind. It's unlike any other type of yoga I've tried. And now I'm waking up before my alarm. It's, oh. And that never happens, ever. What is it's some, so crazy. What is the difference between, because I know there's like many types of yoga, What's, what does this one do differently than, than like normal yoga? It's very mentally challenging. Okay. And it focuses on breath, a lot of breath work, mantra, and different movement. Mm. And it's very, it's I think a bit more like spiritually rooted than like traditional Western style yoga you maybe go to, like a hot yoga class. Right. Kundalini is like, I probably wouldn't have tried this a few years ago even. Wow. Um, but now it is just blowing my mind and I can't believe I'm waking up with so much energy. And then I'll wake up before my alarm, have time to ground myself instead of like rushing out the door and getting late to class. Now I'm getting to my, my Kundalini class on time, wow. getting to hang out with people in the studio and meet the community. So that's been really interesting. Yeah. Wow. I am, um, yeah, I'm a big early riser too. Like mm -hmm. actually, like at, during high school when I had like, such a great routine, I actually got to a point where I would set my alarm for like five o'clock and I actually could wake up before my alarm at like 4.59 and turn off my alarm wow. before it would go off. And that was like, that was those were good times and now I'm a little bit more relaxed. And I just That's like, impressive. Yeah, well, is that impressive or sad that I had the exact well, same routine? So I got to, my body got so used to it. It's your energy in your younger years. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's like, oh, oh, what is life? What I, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes, more salad, more yes. salad, more salad. More greens. It's always good to fill up on the healthy stuff before yes. you, you know, Smart yeah. woman. Yeah. Fill your belly up with. Do you know traditionally veggies. with um like seven course meals like back in the day like now it's kind of changed. Seven it, course meals. Well, like in you know, like traditional like, French seven course yeah. meals where they do like small those, like wow. little, little things. But you know that usually in those salad was always served after your entree. Isn't that weird? Oh yeah. Because they used That's to do because like it was like roughage to like clean you out basically. Right. But now we're still used to having salad before meals, so it's like really different here in America. Yeah. But like traditionally, like in like French cuisine, you would have your salad like as like your like fifth or sixth course. Isn't that weird? What, have you ever had, what was the longest course meal you've experienced? I've had a 12 course before. Yeah, but of course like, you're, not, you're not having huge pieces of food or like big mm -hmm. plates. It's like little bites here and there. But yeah, 12 courses was my biggest. I tried, I did a 22 course meal once. Did you really? They were very small. Yeah, I bet. It was wow, at a restaurant fun. in Denmark Ooh. called Noma. That's like, like one of the, one the best, best in the world. world. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I got so Brag lucky. much, wow, the humble no, brag. It literally like was no, I was so lucky. This experience just fell into my lap and I was like, yes, I'm going to go. Wow. It was crazy. And I'm not like you. You're like yeah. a foodie. Like I just, I don't even know how I landed at this place, but I was there and I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. it. And they gave you a different wine for every course. So I was so drunk by the end. I was like, this is not okay. <laughs> That's incredible. It was a, the best dining experience of my life, oh, probably. That's on my list. It'll happen one day. I hope so. And this is the second best or maybe oh! or maybe it will be the best after we try the main course <laughs> that's, that's my goal guys that's my goal and this will be the last one because they all kind of really this is like the most major question people kind of were asking um what's your first tip to someone if they want to start getting healthier if they're like just starting their fitness or health journey that's a really good question because people ask me a lot mm -hmm. what's the one thing <laughs> Right, which is impossible. Do, right? Yeah. Because everyone's so different. Yeah. But I really think it's choosing whatever resonates with you the most that you feel like you're excited about doing, whether it's exercising every day or eating something that's healthy, like making a healthy meal for yourself. Choose one thing yeah. that's simple and easy to, to accomplish and commit yourself to doing it every day. Yeah. If you can sweat for just five minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. It's really about like habit change. Because exactly. then it becomes second nature, then it becomes part of just what you do and who you are. So just find something that like really go inwards. What resonates with you? What are you excited about? Because if you're not excited about it, 
it's hard to start anything. Yeah, exactly. But once you build up confidence in yourself with habit change, then you can implement even a bit more discipline with other parts of your health. Yeah, and like and going deeper and, and challenging yourself. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's a good first tip for sure. Um, and I think like one thing that is like good to keep in mind is once you do start on that journey, like the things that were once super hard for you that you thought you, thought couldn't, you could never do, eventually become really easy and like second nature, which is yeah. nice. Okay, yay, so that was what app. I love it. Yay, so those were all the questions. I hope you enjoyed the appetizer and we'll definitely fill this plate up and have more with the entree. Mm -hmm. But the next it, um, like segment is called Dream Dish. So while I bring out the dream and I dish it for you, you have to dish for us either a secret about yourself you've never told anyone, or you have to like reveal and dish like a secret like book of, that you love, a secret show you love, or a secret like thing the world should know more about. A secret. Yes. A secret, a secret. You're gonna dish for us, okay? I'm gonna look at the food. Okay. Oh my gosh, I don't know what to say. <gasps> oh my gosh. How does it look? This is my dream pizza. Right yes. Here. Thank you so much again. I'm just gonna be thanking you for a month from now for this experience. This is so lovely. Yay. <laughs> That's what makes me really happy is when like, cause people don't always get to have like their dream food or get to have yeah. like food for, like, from their childhood. So like when I get to make it for them, they're like, ah, and that, that brings me joy. Aww. So basically um, Sky said that growing up, like her family had a lot of like pizzas and a lot of flatbread pizzas and like in the brick oven. And I don't have a brick oven here, but this is pretty close. It looks it's, pretty close. And on it we have um, pesto, we have sun-dried tomatoes, caramelized mm -hmm. onions, and goat cheese. Oh my gosh. So yeah, um, yeah um, why, don't, why don't we, I'll dish this for you. Mm -hmm. And then what is your dish for us oh as I'm God. giving you food here? <laughs> uh, I've been thinking, what do I say? There's a family secret um, that most people don't know. Um, but it's a little risque of a story <laughs> to tell, <laughs> but I'm tempted to tell it because at this point, I don't think my family would care. So my young, my brother Ace, I have three brothers, but my brother Ace, he's a hockey player. He's super focused on hockey. This was when I was in college, right? Yeah. This all went down. But at the time he came back from hockey practice one day and he's watching TV and he start, started to feel really weird and he oh. didn't know what was going on. So he comes, r races up to see me and my mom. And he's like, guys, there's something wrong with me. He's really pale. We don't know what's going on. My mom's like, did you take drugs? He's like, no, I didn't. And he's, you know, he doesn't really drink or do anything. He was at that time, like very focused, focused on hockey yeah. and would never take any drugs or anything. So we we're just like, what is going on with you? And he's just completely just, he looks not okay, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. freaking out, he's shaking. He says, you have to call 911. So <laughs> so we call 911 and the EMTs come to check him out and they all think that he took drugs. And yeah. they're like, what did you do today? Oh, I went to hockey. Oh, did you drink anyone else's drink? He's like, no, no. Anyways, we couldn't figure it out, but we had brought him into the hospital. And he is just freaking out, like actually thinking that he is not gonna make it. Oh my and my God. mom is like, no, motherly instinct says you're gonna be okay yeah, yeah yeah we're gonna get to the bottom of this but he's you know telling us goodbye and i'm like <laughs> so nervous i'm crying oh. but my mom is you know my mom's calm for some reason she's like no nope, i would know if you were gonna die like i i have a very strong motherly gut sensation that would occur if that was happening so don't worry we're good um but it was very scary and my brother my other brothers and my dad we're on a boat with no service so we couldn't oh, get in contact shit. with them yeah so we're freaking out that we can't you know contact them to yeah. come to the hospital and then finally they get up the boat they come you know they come down to the hospital and they've done a bunch of tests on him and they did um, a urine sample and then we we're trying to figure out what happened and he's like oh I, I i cooked this chicken um i cooked this chicken earlier and um, I cooked it with this oil in the cabinet. And, and my mom was like, what, what oil did you use? Oh, I use a Smart Balance oil. And she's like, oh, sh shoot. <laughs> so he had used this oil that was like in the back of the back of the cabinet. Probably rancid. It was rancid in some type of way. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, so the oil that he he couldn't find just like a regular vegetable oil. Right. He, he was like, oh, I just want like a regular vegetable oil. I always saw was avocado oil. So I went looking for this other oil, and he found this smart, sketchy, smart balance oil in the far back of the cabinet, like tucked away, uh -huh. and used it to cook his chicken. And it happened. It turned out that my mom she went to the doctors and she's like, um, Was there any uh, THC in his urine? And they're like, 
uh, yeah, that's the only thing that came up. And she says, oh, yeah, I, I think my son used my weed oil to cook chicken. <laughs> so he got super, super high. <laughs> and the other funny thing that happened was I saw the chicken on the counter. And I, at that time, I was eating meat, or I was like yeah. in between phases of whatever, trying out veganism, whatever. And I saw it on the counter, like cut up. I was like, oh, this looks good. I took a little piece of it and I ate a piece of it. Oh, shit. And then when they said that, I was like, I ate a piece of the chicken too. And I realized that at that point, I had, wasn't feeling anything yet yeah. because it takes like 45 minutes for it to kick in. But then I got super high too. And I only had a tiny piece and he had like a full freaking chicken breast. <laughs> so the kid was high for like two days straight. <laughs> and I couldn't, I felt so bad because I got really stoned and yeah. I had a tiny piece. Yeah. I'm like, I can't imagine what Ace is feeling. And so he kind of got scarred from, you know, from cannabis ever since then. And my dad was super pissed at my mom, but of course we always find humor in everything. And we laugh about that like to this day we still laugh about that story and ace is still scarred from it that experience <laughs> wow that's a, that's a journey that's it was funny. a journey it was yeah it, the whole day was a journey i'll never forget that day <laughs> is he scarred from chicken now too or just the weed oh he still eats chicken okay, okay. yeah just the weed he's like oh my gosh i'm pretty sure he still gets like some minor anxiety attacks because of it. <laughs> Man. Yeah, poor kid. Wow. But, but you know, he stays, stays away from drugs now, so that's, that's a, a good positive. Thing. That's yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a positive thing came out of it. Well, that's a great dish. That's probably the best one so far. So uh, there, you go. there we go. Um, okay, let's try the pizza. Oh my gosh, I'm so pumped. Yeah, this is like a pizza that we would we do homemade pizza nights, and we have all these little ingredients out like onion, caramelized onions, and spinach, and we just make our own, and so this, this reminds me of that a lot. Oh. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It's good. Wow, so, the pesto is amazing. Thank you, yeah, everything's homemade. Oh my gosh. And um, like, yeah, I mean like the pizza dough, like, there's like a, a lot of different methods of doing it, but one thing I love to do is like, you make it like the day ahead, and you can either let it sit out all night or put it in the fridge and let it sit out. Mm -hmm. And like the amount of yeast just like awakens the dough and that's why it's like kind of yeasty and nice. And It's so good. Thank you. Yeah, I love like a really nice thin crust. It's mm -hmm. like crispy but doughy. Wow. What, so if this is, you said you love these different toppings, which we'll, you'll see in the recipe video as well. But if you don't have these, like what are other toppings you love on your pizza? Ooh. Um, yeah, just a bunch of vegetables. Yeah. yeah. I like spinach, like basil. I like a good margarita pizza with just some really nice tomato and basil, mozzarella. Yeah, I'm Italian as well, so pizza is always like a family favorite. <laughs> That's sweet. Um, do you have like do your brothers like down like whole pizzas themselves? Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> that makes sense. They are very much growing boys. <laughs> Still, they're all athletes, so mm. they eat a lot. Um, being the only girl, I learned to eat a lot too. So that's, that's my good. kind of people, my kind yeah. of people. <laughs> okay, so as we're kind of going through here now, um, and we'll keep eating more pizza, there's more salad, and we, <coughs> we'll get you more water if you run out. But now we're gonna go deeper into like, who is Sky? Let's get to know you more, okay? So one thing that has always really impressed me is um, the fact that, because sometimes when people are young and they're on their own in a big city like this, like, and if they get like a big job, awesome. But when you leave, sometimes it's really hard to start doing your own thing. And I'm, I'm kind of starting to experience that now, but like you did this kind of like starting two years ago. And it's like really cool to see how Sky Life has really grown and changed and evolved. And like, I'm just like really proud to see all you've done, but I'm sure it's been a ton of like struggles along the way. And I, I want to hear that journey for you. Like what's been yeah. the ups and downs for you in that? So many ups and downs, but that's the best part. You have to fall in love with the process, not the outcome. Right. Because there's no matter what, in life, no matter what you're doing, there's always going to be ups and downs. It's about your relationship to both mm. and um, your relationship to the struggle that I think is where you can even find joy in some of the struggle because yeah. the process is what's exciting. Yeah. Um, so, well, I, I didn't necessarily know this is what was going to happen. It's just something that um, wasn't necessarily by choice to become an entrepreneur, right. but then it felt like this was totally for a reason. Got like it. I'm meant to be on my own. I don't think I'll ever work for someone again. But when I started Sky Life, I was, I did have a full-time job. Right. 
And then I had another job on top of that just to help pay off student loans. Yeah. And so I started it with two, two jobs really. And, but it was something I knew I needed to do because I had all these ideas. And you know as a creative, when you have ideas inside of you, if they don't get out, then you kind of go crazy. Yeah, it's, it's like you feel like you have all these like, like beautiful babies in your head and you want to like share everything with the world and yeah, it's just like stuck in your brain. Yeah, it's stuck in your brain, stuck in your heart, stuck in your body. Yeah. So I need an outlet to get that out to start making what I wanted to make and really just create. Yeah. And so that was what I, that's why I started the channel yeah. was to do that. And I spent probably six months before I launched it, just bu building out the content and shooting stuff and yeah. starting to edit and starting to put it together and starting to get clear on the vision. And I had actually started in college something that was called Skylife, but it's just very different than what I'm doing now. Yeah, the videos yeah. were so bad. Yeah. And like, I still look at my videos now and I think this could be so much better in so many ways. I feel like that's part of being uh, creative and an entrepreneur is you're always wanting to improve. Yeah. And you look at every project and you think that it could be so much better, but it's really about just getting it out. Yeah. It's about getting okay and, uh, and comfortable with the discomfort of something not being perfect. Um, so that's been huge, just staying consistent with it and just getting a video no, every week no matter what. But yeah, it's not been easy because especially when I was working two jobs, uh, finding the time to edit those videos yeah. and have them hopefully deliver value to the audience because that was always my biggest concern. It's like, is this gonna help people or is this yeah. gonna be part of the solution right. or the problem? I, I really hope that every piece of content I make is a part of the solution and can actually help people if, healthier happier lives yeah and that's always the mission is how do I educate inspire and empower others to live their healthiest happiest life like it has to it has to do that yeah everything I make has to do that so that's always that's been a challenge when you're trying to make at such a fast pace while also just trying to live and, yeah. and be human and take care of yourself have a social life like see yeah. your family see your friends right yeah, yeah. yeah I mean it's Definitely, it's been super challenging and then there have been times and you can probably relate when you're editing something or when you have a huge project to edit, you're like, this is the last thing I wanna do. Yeah, yeah. I do not wanna stay up tonight and edit this video. Yeah. Like, I would love to just watch TV and go to sleep, yeah. but my video has to come out Thursday yeah. and it has to happen. Yeah. And I have a commitment to myself and my audience to do that. Yeah. And it's something that's way bigger than me, so let me get myself out of the way so I can just be a clear channel for, for that to move through me. Exactly. Like, it's a it's just a part of hopefully being a part of the solution to have this world be healthier yeah because a lot of people who may be watching you or this or other content on YouTube or online like they may not understand like you know you, you when you watch a video it's you know four minutes long and you think wow like it was just she just like did it for a week that's all it took where like you know but if you're editing videos it takes so much brain power mm -hmm. and like you have to like re-watch your face and your voice like so many times and you're like you want to like shoot yourself yeah, it's so annoying so sick of yourself yeah <laughs> and but like you know hopefully like when you're kind of doing it and you're creating it you're like wow well this story is still worth telling and that's why you know people creatives like us like still push it out but yeah editing like is hard man do you yeah. and and now when you're um this is growing um is it still just you doing everything yourself or do you have people helping you or what, what's like your um kind of team like it's still me. Yeah. I sometimes hire people for shoots if I have to be interviewing someone or doing something active and I need people behind the camera to help run the shoot. Yeah. But sometimes I literally just like set up the cameras, yeah. set up the audio, press record, and hope it all goes well. And exactly. I hop in front of the camera and like yeah. interview someone. Yeah. Like that's a lot of the times that's what I'm doing. Um, and I think it's important when you're starting a every anything to really understand how to do every part of the process yourself. Exactly. You understand what goes into it and then you can properly hire from there and properly delegate. And and so that is right now it is still me. I definitely want to be able to hire people at some point in order to expand. Yeah. I'm just not at that stage yet. Yeah. Because, like, especially, like, I love what you said about having to know every single job because, like, we did that when we had our old job at BuzzFeed, but even now with creating our own stuff, like, you, it's, like, really ridiculous to think, oh, I'm going to bring someone else on um, and pay them money and they, like, should look up to me as, like, their boss, but then be like, oh, wait, what are you doing again? Or, like, not understand, like, their process of work. It's really important to, like, have, like, the vision you want dictated correctly and you have, only can do that if you've done that job before. Yeah. And what's nice is, like, 
Um, and I also really related to it when you said like about just putting the camera up. Like so like I don't know, you guys can't see the behind where the camera is right here. And I have my lovely friend Cullen who's like helping me this month because it was just so crazy. But usually, like especially for season one, like all it really was was putting the camera on and like I'm like cooking lights, sound recording, I have like my headphones right here. It's just nuts, but that's just like it's kind of crazy, but isn't it fun to like know that when you are creating this stuff, it's like it's fully yours and this is like fully mine and like no one else owns it. It's ours, which is like yeah. such an empowering thing. Yeah, and I love that about BuzzFeed is they allow creators to take ownership of their ideas. Yeah. And that's that's super fun for me. It's to take yeah. ownership of an idea and really see it through the way that I, I see it. Yeah. But also I it gets lonely being a solo creator and you want you crave teamwork and I yeah. constantly crave teamwork so that's why I am trying to figure out ways to increase the amount of collabs I do yeah and do more collaborations because that's really important to me is to be working with a team and like yeah. come together for something bigger than just your own content you yeah know? exactly because like yeah I, I, I've also kind of suffered with that because um, like when I was doing like freelance private chefing and I did like freelance food photography and food videos like it was mm -hmm. also all done in this tiny little apartment but it was like just me so it'd be like a month that I'd kind of like barely see anybody and they, yeah. like, that's like not good for your mental health it's like good to like yeah. connect with people so I, I feel you there yeah I mean as humans we are social beings yeah and they've done research on this that <clears throat> social interaction and community is a very important factor in longevity yeah. and health yeah. People who live the longest tend to have the strongest social circles. Mm. So we need it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, it gets tough e editing behind a screen alone all day. So got to get out and see your friends. Do it at a coffee shop or, like, maybe at the gym and, like... <laughs> at the gym. Just editing, on the treadmill and editing. Right? Oh, my God, that'd be I have, crazy. like, hard drives stacked up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just camped out here. <laughs> also, um, going on and doing more entrepreneurial stuff, what's been, like, one of the ch greatest challenges for you kind of having to manage your own business like what are things that you're coming across that you didn't expect you would oh. well when you start to <laughs> manage your own business you have to know how to do business mm. Mm. <laughs> so I didn't know when, when you're working as a creative for a company your only job is to think about the creativity yeah. and making video in our case making videos yeah. and you get to focus on that now my brain is split between that and managing a business doing calls and negotiations with brands and contracts yeah. and money you know how you like structure out pricing for your work mm -hmm. um invoicing all of that i mean you have to learn how to manage a business accounting you have to learn how to do everything that comes with managing a business in on top of you know the creation that yeah. you're already doing yeah. so learning how to split my brain <laughs> and it have it be split even more right? like, already doing so many things have it be efficient um and clear like seeking clarity on what that is that's been such a challenge but also i didn't realize how much i love like being a businesswoman yeah I'm like yeah i love negotiating now and it's just it's all a learning process as well yeah. you kind of have to learn how to know what you're worth and just be confident in that yeah and so what do you do because like one thing i'm experiencing is like um the ups and downs of like when jobs do come if you do a freelance jobs yeah. or when certain like brand deals or certain um opportunities for your own content come through like what do you do when there are like the down weeks or down months or what do you do like when there's like an in-between period well, you just pray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just hope. Um, um, no, well, that I mean, a huge part of it is just having real belief in yourself and real yeah. faith that you're going to be fine and you have something of value to offer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really big on manifestation, and it's worked for me in so many ways. But I mean, you can't just have <laughs> be sitting in your room manifesting and visualizing stuff. You got to take some action. Exactly. So it's a lot of um, just keep the action going like yeah. getting stagnant is it, that is a trap so just keep action going mm -hmm. um but also i was very lucky from the jobs that i had i was able to save quite a significant amount of money in order to feel like i could take a big a bigger risk right um and mm -hmm. now like kind of go more more off on my own Good. yeah because yeah, like sometimes like Finances are really scary when when they go south and like yeah any kind of cushion you can get if you can get one is nice but then then you're like okay great now I can focus on me and what I want yeah 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 I mean 
that's that was key is like how can I save as much money as possible and I still spend most of my money on food on like high quality healthy food I don't really buy a lot of new clothes or anything like that like I just never I'm not really good at fashion anyways because <laughs> I'm able to save a lot of money on those types of things and I don't really drink or go out so yeah. I'm kind of a grandma well <laughs> I love that I think if anyone should waste money on stuff it should be on food because mm-hmm. it's going into your body it like it changes who you are it's, it's going to live in you forever I think it's, it's important it's an investment in your health and yeah. your soul yeah. and you eat food that makes you happy yes mm-hmm. when did when would you say like was there like a story of like when you first walked into your first yoga class and it like changed your life or like the first time like you like really decide like really invest your time in health and wellness or did it just was it always there hmm my mom got really interested in health when i was very young mm-hmm. probably eight years old and she was all about the alkaline diet before it was a thing mm. now it's super trendy tom brady does this and you know it's a big deal mm. Which is what, for but those who don't know, I mean. Alkaline eat. diet is basically eating alkaline foods on the oh. pH scale. So the pH scale is either acidic or alkaline. So mm. you want to be eating foods that are um, alkaline to alkalize the blood. There's a bunch of, like, you know, science that goes into how that happens that I'm not going to bore anyone with. Um, but, yeah, it's basically about alkalizing your blood in order to have healthier cells. Like, the oh. health of your blood is important, of course. So, so anyway, she got really interested in, in that. And... And I, for some reason, I don't know what it was, I was just so obsessed with the concept of what it means to be healthy. Yeah. And I think it was just her interest, but it just sparked an interest in me. Mm. And my brothers were, you know, they didn't really care. <laughs> they were like, whatever, we're just gonna keep eating what we want, we're boys, like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, for some reason, was so interested and just started diving into that. But I also was an athlete, so I wanted to be better at my sport. And that's why I started yoga, to be better at soccer. Mm. But then when, like you said, the first time I walked into a yoga class, yeah. I did not understand what it really was. Right. And then I just totally, I was like, this is so hard in so many other ways yeah. than I had experienced as an athlete. And I was addicted to the feeling of it. So I just kept going back. And all I knew is I, every time I went to yoga, I felt amazing afterwards. So I'm just gonna keep going. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and now my practice has evolved in so many ways. It it was not spiritual for years, and now it's become my spiritual practice. Nice. Yeah, for me, like every time I go, because um, I'm a pretty strong guy, but you forget that like a lot of your strength should be coming like from like your core and within. So like I'll be doing trying to do a move, and I'm like, nope, can't can't do it. <laughs> and then you see like like so like at least for me and my yoga instructor, her name is Deborah, a little short British lady. You she need to can. Meet this woman. Oh my God, I, she's at the Y every Saturday. If you want to go, oh but she's gosh. incredible. Let's do it. Um, but she, like, yeah, she's just a tiny little thing, and she can get all these crazy positions, and she just like can hold it forever. I'm like, so she's like maybe five times stronger than I am, oh and God. in this little body, and it's like so <laughs> impressive. And and then yeah, like the whole mindfulness. Whenever I leave, it's like my whole day is like. Ah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You feel more. It just brings you to the present moment. Yeah. And we're living in our society especially and a lot of the times we're stuck in the past or the future yeah but what do we have right now people (laughs) so eating is a very mindful practice it is yeah i love to like like that i would say that's kind of like my mental escape Mm -hmm. it's like you know not a lot of people you know choose to do certain things when it comes to uh their food or even their mindfulness in general but my mm-hmm. thing that i do is like no matter what i'm gonna cook for myself mm-hmm. like i'm not someone like i really only go out for food if i'm going with friends and like, it's like their day out or something right like when it comes to like food i eat i don't like go out and order food i don't i always just like i'm like what am i gonna make today because mm-hmm. that's for my because for me one thing i love about food is like it's you use your hands and to me it's like an ancient art right so like maybe just like yoga or other like martial arts or like fighting or sex i think food is also like an mm-hmm. ancient human thing mm-hmm. so like i even though i work on my computer a lot or i'm like in the digital internet space a lot in my mind like being able to actually like have my hands back in food again like i'm like oh yeah i'm a human you know yeah and i love that yes yeah. i'm all about that you know we got to get back to our primal roots yeah Especially as we enter into a new digital dimension, staying grounded in the current dimension that exists in this physical realm, yeah. and staying, yeah, staying human, I think is going to be important yeah. as we evolve to the next phase. Especially because, like, I feel like um, 
it's so easy to get lost, especially now at times, like mm-hmm. now. And like I, one thing that you always do on Instagram is I've seen is like you love, I love like the real and fake things you do. Mm-hmm. And like you always kind of talk about mindfulness on social media. And like, yeah, are there things that you're worried about? Um, or like, how do you stay present when it's so easy to get lost in like numbers and like people doing better or worse than you, right? It can kind of eat you up in, inside mm-hmm. sometimes. Social media is uh, a trap for comparison. Yeah. <laughs> I love social media because yeah. I wouldn't be able to do anything I'm doing or share the message that I want to share without it. Yeah. It's allowing more people to do what they love it's allowing for more people to be who they are and, and to, to be rewarded for that and to connect with people. So I think it's amazing. But that's why I post so much content about digital wellness because like anything else, we have to understand our relationship to it yeah. and be conscious about it. And it's a n- now another pillar of our health. Yeah. You know, you have your physical exercise, you have eating, you have mindfulness, sleep, drinking water what's your digital health look like? How many hours a day are you spending on Instagram comparing yourself to other people? So it's a whole other pillar of health now. And that's why I've started to make a lot more content about it because I think it is crucially important for us to really have a solid grasp on our relationship with it and and use it as a tool rather than have it be something that um, completely destroys you because it absolutely can. Totally. And that's why I post the fake versus real photos because it's so easy now to manipulate what you look like just with a few swipes of your finger and I'm not judging people for doing that because there's a reason why we're doing that you know we're suffering (laughs) with like seeing these images on social media that don't line up with reality and then we feel the need to alter ourselves that comes from pain and suffering that's I'm not placing judgment on it yeah And I don't think there's anything wrong with like editing photos and making them look nice and your Instagram looking nice because it's another art form as well. But we have to be aware of that existing and see it for what it is. And like what it is doing to our our minds and like the current state. And I think it's like, if you can approach it, and this is, I say this out loud as I'm trying to also tell myself this, (laughs) but like, you know, if you approach it as this is my art, this is how I'm going to express myself, but it can't be, it can't control my entire existence. If you think about who you would be if your digital self was deleted, like who are you as a person? And our digital self, these digital avatars that are now existent in mm. this new era we've moved into, the digital world is a new dimension. Yeah. It is, like it's, Basically, your yeah. digital self is another extension of yourself. But who are you in the real world? And then how does your digital self relate to that person? Mm -hmm. And is it, um, it doesn't have to be like the exact same accurate version of you because that's not realistic. The digital world's a new, completely new space and dimension. So it's gonna be a bit different. It's okay that social media is kind of like a highlight reel, but you have to understand that. Yeah, Yeah, is that digital person still honest? Is exactly. Still, is it still you? Yeah. And yeah. Who would you be if that digital avatar was completely deleted and how would you feel wow. about yourself? That's a good, that's a really great, I never even thought about it that way. Like uh, what a great way to kind of like check in on your mm-hmm. mental state. Cause let's say if your entire everything is from that digital person and you don't anything in your own life, like that's mm-hmm. scary. So yeah. I think if you're able to separate it and like if you're healthy in your real person, real life state, then it'll allow you to not rely so much and have this become damaging. Absolutely. Wow. I actually dream sometimes about what would it be like if I deleted all of my social media and my YouTube channel and didn't live with a phone or live on the internet at all. What if I just went and experienced the world without the digital world? Yeah. What would my life be like and yeah. how would I be happy? And yeah. I think I probably would have an amazing life and I'd be yeah. very present. I'd be able to connect with the world in a different way. But I also see social media as like it's a calling almost to share something that's in your heart. Yeah. And so it's kind of a responsibility when you feel like you have this message in your heart that you really want to connect humans with. Yeah. It's sort of a way to do that. And yeah. that's amazing. So yeah. I continue it for that reason. But then sometimes I have those fantasies. Yeah. If Ditch it all. Yeah. Delete it all. Delete it all. Travel like, the country. It sounds really fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll experiment with it for a yeah. month or something. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is it, and then I'll make a video about it. Yeah. As you have to, you have to. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
Um, okay, so obviously you're someone that is like kind of paving the way to like a really great future with Sky Life, and I'm like so excited to see where it all goes. But for right now, obviously like we're all like really young and we're kind of still like experimenting with things. So like, do you have any like health icons that you look up to that you really admire, um, that kind of inspire the work that you do? So there are there are a few. Mm. <laughs> I well I love Oprah for so many reasons. Yes. But I truly think she's such a living living example of somebody who has used her voice and her true power, this mm. divine feminine powerful mm -hmm. energy for so much good. Yeah. And I love how much she talks about spirituality and mm. is really curious and exploring that and sharing that. And I just think she's had an incredible impact on the world. Yeah. So I see her as someone I 100% look up to in that yeah. way. Yeah, she also like one of the biggest things for me that just inspires me about her is like um, her stance on gratitude. It's yes. like being grateful for what you do have and whether you want to grow more or you're happy or you're content, like being grateful for every day of what you have because sometimes like I lose sight of that. I think everyone like, has times of losing sight of what they do have and that's when you start to spiral, I think. Mm -hmm. But when you like remind yourself like I, ha I have my health, I'm alive, I have family, I have friends, I have food on my table, you know, all those things. Like, then you're like, mm -hmm. wow, I have it better than a lot of people in the world. So it's like, mm -hmm. we should be really grateful for what we do have. Absolutely. And she's all about that, which is just like a good reminder. Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, so she's the big one. <laughs> A lot of people I think look up to as well and then I have uh, yoga teachers who have changed my life my first yeah. yoga teacher she's incredible she, her name's Trisha and <laughs> shout out to Trisha. Yeah, Trisha she made me fall in love with yoga and she is oh my gosh yeah. the most amazing human this beautiful divine goddess yeah. and she's I don't know how old she she looks like she's like in her 40s or 30s wow, or wow. something I don't even know how old she is at this point but she's so beautiful mm. like radiate radiates health and beauty and is so loving and kind and was able to create such an amazing space in her classes for healing through yeah. yoga and so she's um she made a huge impact on my life and I I try and embody her when I teach yoga yeah. try to embody her energy when I'm just connecting with humans, yeah. and yeah, she's someone I look up to a lot as well. Wow. And Trisha. I'm like, I hope, you know, whenever I'm whatever age she is, because I literally don't know. I'm like, you could be like 35 or like 50 and look really yeah. awesome. I'm like, yeah. whatever, whatever I'm her age, I want to look like her. That good, yeah. <laughs> wow. And one of the nice is like, I feel like you're probably, there's probably lots of people that follow you and kind of see you as their person that's kind of sparking their interest in health and wellness, and that's like probably pretty cool too. I, I mean, I hope that I am uh, contributing to the solution. Yes. And really, it's about connecting. It's real. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I, I really have dreams and this vision to do live events that bring people together offline into the real world, where yeah. we can come together as community and experience healing and health together. Yeah. So that is something that yeah, I, it's in my heart that you know it will manifest when the time is right. It might be sooner than I think too. I th I'm I'm like starting to teach more in person events and Ooh. starting to like move the ball forward on that sooner than I thought. So, putting it out there, you know, yes. putting the antenna out to put it into the universe. Yeah, <laughs> it, it'll, manifestation. It yeah. happens. I I've just seen how much you've grown, and like I wanna, I can't wait to see what the next year will bring and what you know what the next decades will bring because like I already like love your positive vibe. It like makes me feel really great, and I can't wait to like see how much you can really make an impact with that. Wow. Thank you so much, and likewise, I'm yeah. so excited for your journey. Like you're set, you radiate so much beautiful, positive energy. I try. You I, I do push it out. Good aura, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. You have a great aura, Matt, <laughs> and I'm so excited to to see your journey unfold too, and yeah. know that we'll be in each other's lives. Yes, yeah, like my goal is like other. it's really rare to find people that not only care about themselves and their journey and how it can like improve the world, but like really do want to share the love. And you're one of those rare people, especially here in town. And like we met when, we, when I first came to town. Mm -hmm. So like to have someone like you who's just like been a positive vibe the whole way to, oh. through, you know, it's, it's nice to know there's people like you in the world because mm -hmm. there's a lot of like hard people out there and a lot of people that really just want to bring you down. And mm -hmm. I think it's, I've, I've chosen a long time ago to focus on the good people. Mm -hmm. And so far that's worked really well for me. And, yes. and I think you're the same. Like it's yeah. like, good, just like focus on the positive stuff in life. Absolutely, and yeah. what you put out, you attract, and then you, it's a domino effect yes. to spread it to everyone else, and it's really about being loving and compassionate to anyone who maybe is suffering. Yeah. You know, there's so many haters online that we see. Yeah. Like, it's ridiculous yeah. the amount of, like, suffering that exists there, and yeah. I always try and send 
send love yes. to anyone that's hating. Yeah, like, I always res I always respond with like a nice compliment to them, or like, yeah. I'm always like, "Well, I had fun in the video. I'm sorry you didn't enjoy it, but I had a fun Something time." Something positive. Yeah. Back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we are kind of going towards the end of the interview, but I have a few kind of last questions for you. The first one is, so this is the Din of Yous guest book, right? Well. Wow. Um, and so everyone who's been on the show has like signed their name, they're asking questions to the next guest. Oh my okay? gosh. So um, uh, basically I'll ask a question that the last guest asked for you and then you'll leave one for the next guest, okay? So. Um, my previous guest from the last episode was Ryan, who was one of the interns and fellows with us at BuzzFeed. I love him. And um, he was like, oh, Sky, what can I ask for her? That'd be so much, like, really funny. <laughs> and so this is what he ended up with, okay? He said, hi, hope you are well. Uh, Sky, what is, one of, what is one yoga move that I can use in the bedroom? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Leave it to Ryan to ask a question like that. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yoga does come in handy in the bedroom sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, okay, a yoga move. Um, well, okay. There's a ri really good hip opener called pigeon pose. Pigeon pose, okay. You know, pigeon and you yes. have one leg up and at like sort of an angle. Yeah. And then the other leg's back. And then you basically just kind of sink your hips in the floor. It's great for runners, great hip opening pose. <laughs> you could try doing that like on top of someone. Ah! <laughs> And see Ryan, how it goes. Ryan, you re you're listening. <laughs> you can do that pose in all sorts of ways in the in the bed. You know, just experiment with it. And it's a good hip opener. It's like yoga and sex, and it's good for your body in all sorts of ways. I love that. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, so then after we'll have you write a question for the next guest, and the next guest is Jasmine J from Buzzfeed. Have you oh heard of her? Gosh. Love her. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and then my final little like kind of stuff that I like to talk about is. Um, so if there was like a younger Sky here, maybe like let's say seven or eight years old, first, what would she think of the food we had? And then B, what would you tell her to give her advice in her younger age? I love this question. Okay. So fun fact, actually, <laughs> this might sound a little weird, but I post a picture of myself when I was six or seven, I okay. think, like a school photo okay, yeah. on my vision board. <gasps> Cute. So, and that is because I think about what would I tell that little girl? Yeah. What would I tell her? That she sucks and she doesn't know anything and she can't get all that she wants to achieve in this life? No. Or that she can follow her freaking dreams and yes. achieve everything on that vision board and more. So I put a picture of her up on there and um, she would be so freaking pumped about this meal. Yes. She would be in heaven. She would be just over the moon about this. This is her favorite, her favorite right here. Yes. So that's, yes, that's that. And what would I tell her? Um, I would just tell her to um, never, like don't care what other people think so much. Yeah. In the way that, um, you know, you wanna like connect with people in a positive way, yeah. but I feel like I struggled a lot with social anxiety for a lot of my life, like yeah. being so fearful of what other people thought of me and being so afraid that they wouldn't like me. Yeah. Um, and that I was so socially awkward. <laughs> and, and I would just tell her to be yourself fully and the people who are meant to be in your life are gonna love you for you. And you know, you s I still have to tell myself that sometimes. Yeah, same. To not care so much what other people think. But no matter what you do, I feel like there's, there are gonna be people out there that maybe don't agree with you exactly. or don't vibe with you. Yeah. They're always gonna exist, so you might as well do what you wanna do. Exactly, like I, I always say like, you don't know, like you are you know you're not really making a huge impact unless like half the world loves you, half the world hates you. Mm -hmm. And it's always gonna be that way, so find your tribe. Mm -hmm. Find your people that support you, love you, because it makes way more sense to like, invest your time and energy into them and all be happy together than waste your time trying to please people that will never be happy. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Well, so this is the end. Give me a oh. hug. That was so great. Um, oh, wait, actually, let's do like a, a deeper hug because that was like a good one. That was like, oh. see, what great energy. My God. This is so nice. Yeah. I'm so uplifted. So you guys, thank you for spending this time with us for this last 45 minutes to an hour. Whether you're cooking at home and listening to us or you're like driving to work or you're at work not really working and just listening to us, thank you for spending the time. Um, we really appreciate it and like, I really just, I'm so grateful for those of you who have kind of stuck with this channel and this uh, show. And I know you're already in love with Sky, so please go check out her Instagram. Is it, what is it, is it just at Sky Collins, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also her YouTube channel, Sky Life. Trust me, it's gonna like, inspire you to like get out, get healthy, and like connect with the world. 
So thank you, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yay, that was so nice. Uh, thank you so much. You did so amazing. I hope so. I hope yes. it was good. It was, oh, are you kidding me?